In the Monster Hunter games, you will often have access to all of the weapons at the start so you can try out each one. However, these are just the basic forms of the weapons and the hunter needs to gather materials and craft better weapons to hunt more powerful monsters. But since forging and upgrading multiple weapons is expensive initially, the hunters will have to commit to their chosen weapon for the time being. The process of testing out each weapon is like the blacksmith Presea from Magic Knight Rayearth lending you a weapon until you can get her the materials she needs. When you have the materials, she will then create the weapon that is made just for you. This series is dedicated to exploring the poetry behind the playstyle. What does it feel like to use this weapon? What makes each weapon special? What makes fans of a weapon fiercely loyal to their favorite weapon? For this episode, we get goofy with the gimmick weapons. Whether it is having little minigames or having transforming abilities, there is more to these weapons than meets the eye. Play fetch with your kinsect, play music for your friends, or play origami with your weapons. These weapons are real game changers. Whether it is nullifying stamina management, a song of healing, or an orchestra of whoop-ass, the support buffs granted by the hunting horn makes them welcome in any hunting party. But the hunting horn is no mere support weapon. It is a fantasy battle priest realized. Hunting horn hunters must be in the middle of the melee. Your god is a god of war and does not ask for donations and prayer, but blood and violence. Only when your enemies have felt your wrath can you hope to call down blessings. But the hunting horn does not charge into battle blindly. Violence might be your means, but it is not your goal. Each swing of the hunting horn must be deliberate. Each note is a different swing and each swing can lead into another swing which grants a different note. This tempo has to be mastered to build up songs quickly. This can lead to some happy accidents as Hunting Horn can land devastating strikes without the hunter meaning it. They just needed a note. You might think the song minigame would restrict the hunter, but it actually creates a fun mechanic and teaches hunters to choose their attacks wisely. When a Hunting Horn hunter attacks, their actions have deep layers of intent. They never swing without purpose and have forecasted the next 3, 6, even 10 seconds of the fight. They will also take a few seconds before each hunt to memorize or write down their songs, like they are a Dungeons & Dragons wizard memorizing their daily spells. A gigantic weaponized musical instrument is such a ridiculous concept that it loops right back to being awesome. It might look bulky, but the huge sweeping blows are actually fast, and the animations make it look like it has impact. When you pull off a guitar riff after bashing a monster's head in with said guitar, you can't help but feel like a rock star. It is the most brutal implement of murder in the game, adding insult and injury to all of your attacks. The Hunting Horn is an absolutely classy way to slay. Speed or power? Why not both? The Switch Axe swaps between two weapons. The Axe has good mobility and reach. The Chops have a good range and can even be used to hit monsters in the air. The combo ramps up in speed and turns the Axe into a whirlwind of Chops. The Sword has power and damage. The Swings are weighty but still manageable and safe as you can roll out of most attacks. File Bursts can destroy anything. Sword mode does have a meter, but Switch Axe has tricks to overcome this. Poke with the axe and switch to the sword to beat them into submission. However, this is but one way to hunt with the Switch Axe. Since the Switch Axe is essentially two weapons, hunters are not stuck with the weaknesses of one weapon. While other weapons have a mechanic that is integral to their playstyle, for the Switch Axe it is optional lacking any crazy upkeeps or buff management. Since both modes are complete solid movesets, hunters can choose how to use their switch axe. Some only use axe, some only use sword, some swap between the two and everything in between. 
all those playstyles are valid. While using all of the weapon's tricks can bring out the full damage potential, nothing is preventing Switch Axe Hunters from sticking with what they are comfortable with. In addition, the transformations between axe and sword are wicked cool and never get old. Integrating the transformation into combos makes you feel like a Bloodborne Hunter. Switch Axe is one of the weapons that have the highest base damage in the game. They may not have insane damage multipliers or power moves, but Switch Axe Hunters still land frequent, heavy hits on the monster with good damage. The Switch Axe is the curious hybrid, the happy midpoint, the grand generalist, taking the strengths of other weapons while having none of their weaknesses. They might not have that one thing they are good at, but Switch Axe Hunters create a style all their own. No other weapon emphasizes the hunter over the weapon. When you use the charge blade, you play the long game. With a complex defense and devastating offense, the charge blade is a very technical, tactical, adaptable weapon. One of the more original weapons, the charge blade is a sword and shield that turns into an axe. If that doesn't spell cool, I don't know what does. It might not have the switch axe's agility, but the charge blade can stand its ground. Use the sword to take advantage of small openings, block attacks, and build up files. Use the axe to crank up the damage to 11, stun the monsters, or charge the shield. Both weapons power the other one, so the Charge Blade Hunter has to master both. When the right moment comes, the Charge Blade Hunter goes all in to unleash the Ultra Burst. Charge Blade has crazy damage, but it takes patience and the Hunter must wait for the perfect opportunity. The Charge Blade is a solid weapon. Both modes have viable strikes that have impact and weight. The transformations are just sexy, and being able to guard is useful. It is not too difficult to learn and use, but over time, the Charge Blade Hunter notices things they don't quite understand, so they look it up. Charge Blade Hunters then realize how deep their weapon is as they could charge the shield and files for extra damage, use files individually, knock down and tank damage with guard points, and more. Charge Blade Hunters are always discovering something new. The long game of the Charge Blade is not limited to the hunts, but to learning the weapon as well. Eventually, the weapon evolves with them. Moves they never thought about before suddenly becomes another tool in their belt. The guard points are crazy hard to pull off, but it makes you feel like you are exchanging blows with the monster and winning. The charge blade is a complicated weapon, but one that is very rewarding. When you use the charge blade, the jaws that drop won't just be the monsters. One word to describe the insect glaive? Stunts. Whether it is vaulting above a monster's attacks, using an attack to evade a charge, mounting a monster to save an ally in trouble, or letting their kinsect get the last hit, insect glaive hunters have moments of insanity and awesomeness that keep them coming back to the weapon. Mobility is the name of the game with the insect glaive. Insect glaive hunters spend more time in the air than on the ground launching themselves around like a madman while having very good aerial control. Even the base attacks of the weapon are mobile, allowing hunters to attack while evading. The Insect Glaive is a polearm, a weapon that is often overlooked in video games. Fans of polearms will not be disappointed as the weapon has some very slick animations which are fun to use. Everything about the Insect Glaive, from vaulting to attacking, is so smooth that it feels more like a choreography than a hunt. Since the hunter fights alongside the kinsect, this makes the hunter feel like a beastmaster or druid. With the kinsect, the insect glaive hunter is always doing something. Even when repositioning, the hunter can command the kinsect to grab essences or just deal damage to the monster. Essence grabbing makes the insect glaive hunter familiar with the monster in a way that no other hunter is. They are keenly aware of weak points, one that other hunters may overlook. The aerial attacks makes this hunter the dedicated rodeo rider. 
They are always riding the monster, asserting dominance, making them sit down and respect your authority. The riding can save your teammates from a dangerous situation, give them some breathing room or set up a powerful attack. It is a multitasking weapon and one that feels good to use. While it might seem daunting at first, over time, Insect Glaive Hunters can chain boosts, attacks, vaults, and mounts seamlessly. Acrobatic, kinetic, dynamic, and bombastic, Insect Glaive is the true sovereign of the skies. Thanks for watching! If you haven't seen the other videos, you can catch them here. The last of the weapons will be covered soon, so consider subscribing. Until our paths cross again, see you, Ace Cadet.